her death experiences when she was resting in her bed at home. Her training in acute care led her to believe that people should die in a hospital or hospice, which is an intriguing notion. Therefore, the thought of simply lying down and dying was shocking to her. Indeed, she was sound asleep in her home when the incident occurred. She recalled the sensation of her vitality dwindling as she felt her body sag. It seemed as though her chest was slammed with an enormous weight. Wondering if it was really so important, she concentrated on her breathing. Over and over she let this weight fall, while she pushed it away until she finally decided to stop. Even though she knew that stopping could result in her death, she was still not scared. Her first, amusing thought when she exhaled was, breathing is really overrated. She found it amusing that individuals felt compelled to do it. A surge of vitality washed over her in that very moment. Buzzing sound, rather than her heartbeat, sounded to her. She found the buzzing sound fascinating because she had no idea the nervous system could produce such a sound. It sounded like a soft hum that went away as her neurological system turned off. Just as her breath was about to expire, a dazzling light caught her eye. An enveloping, reassuring glow began on her brow and gradually intensified until it enveloped her entirely. It seemed as if it had long been a part of me. There wasn't just one brightness. It was like a thousand suns beaming down on her. It was reassuring and cozy rather than dazzling. Embracing the sensations of love and calm, she let herself be embraced by this light. Soon after, she had the bizarre sensation of soaring over her bedroom as she watched her husband work in the kitchen. Her husband had a general idea that she was sick, but he didn't realize just how bad her condition was. In her heart, she knew he would be all right. She saw him finding love again and establishing a family of his own, but it wouldn't compare to the love they shared. She was quite appreciative of her family and parents as well. There was an abundance of thankfulness, an opportunity to express, thank you, I love you, and I appreciate you, rather than melancholy as we said our goodbyes. And then, rather than a loved one waiting for her, there was an impartial third party whose job it was to help her reflect on her life thus far. She was just 29 years old and had no clue what a life review entailed. Neither the concept nor accounts of near-death experiences had previously crossed her path. They started going over her life story, not word for word but the crucial parts, the times when she did things because she cared and the times when she was selfish. She hurt herself the first time she let her ego get the best of her, like when she picked on a friend in kindergarten. It was excruciatingly hard for her because she felt her friend's sorrow. Her human character was at issue, not judgment. As they continued, she relived joyful, heartfelt moments from her performing career. She went into a new, darker, but not totally devoid of light, realm after the life review. Even a speck of light seemed out of place in that dimly lit space. During her journey with the four spirits, she felt as though they downloaded data she might use in the future. This was a precious and serene moment, like being handed a box of insight instead of words to convey knowledge. She felt obligated to put her newfound knowledge to good use. After the download was complete, she had a greater grasp of who she was and their common goal. After then, she experienced an overwhelming feeling of oneness with all people, accompanied by love, an unbounded perception of reality, limitless joy, and limitless tranquility. It seemed like an eternity had passed, and the passage of time seemed irrelevant. Yet, like an outside notion, she became sidetracked and lost in her own thoughts. Someone told her that the part of her that develops attachments was symbolized by the light and being that she saw approaching. After this being went through her, she was back in touch with love, the one true truth, it was at that pivotal moment that she completely lost her identity as Moto. It was as if her identity, her passions, and her life experiences slowly dissipated, exposing her boundless spirit, at one with the cosmos, and engulfed in the highest forms of happiness, contentment, and love.
This astounding realization initiated a profound and astounding metamorphosis. After this realization, she heard what sounded like complex thoughts rather than typical human speech. This other voice told her plainly that she shouldn't have lingered in that remarkable spot any longer. She felt a stronger calling to return to Earth and assist those in need, perhaps because she was reluctant to leave the incredible feeling of oneness and joy she had experienced. She initially fought this urge, but after the news had settled in, she courageously chose to answer the phone. She needed help getting back into her bodily form. Returning from the afterlife to this mortal plane, she sensed a powerful pull. Out of nowhere, she found herself back in her physical form, experiencing all the joys and sorrows of life but still being unquestionably alive. It was tough for her to tell her spouse about this amazing encounter. Because of how profound the experience was, it was difficult to articulate and comprehend in its entirety. Fearing that people would think she was weird for sharing such an unusual event, she battled with uncertainties and anxieties. Nevertheless, as time went on, she started to grasp the immense significance of conveying this message to everyone. She grasped the profound significance of their shared objective, which was both simple and profound, sharing limitless love with all living things and reaching into the depths of their souls were major themes. The path of self-discovery and enlightenment came to a close with this realization. Her tale touched the hearts of everyone who heard it, demonstrating how we are all capable of overcoming obstacles and finding common ground through the power of our shared humanity.